Tough day inside the Vine Center for the Liberty men's basketball team as they suffer a pair of losses here today. First, they lost the game to the Princeton Tigers, 67-64, to and they lost arguably their best player so far this season. Caleb Holmesley, a little more than three minutes into the second half, goes down with a right knee injury, and Coach Richie McKay confirming after the ball game that Holmesley is indeed out for the rest of the season with that injury. Alongside Paul Nazigan, my name is Nick Pierce, and wow, Paul, that's a, that's a lot to digest here. After the ball game here is the Flames uh, with a loss now fall to four and six on the year. Fought hard after Caleb went down. We'll talk more about that in just a couple of moments, but it was just really just a sickening feeling, wasn't it? Yeah, when he went down, I mean, we'll talk more about the game, but um, a kid that as soon as he hit the floor, you, you, I think everybody in the building knew it was major. And, um, you know, you're crushed for him, uh, a kid that, you know, has had an injury. He's lost a senior high school year to an injury. And um, to, to kind of know now he's done for the year, your heart just breaks for him because of the kind of kid he is, the kind of uh, performance he was playing, his teammates feel for him, his coach. I mean, it's just that's that's tough. That's the worst loss of the day, uh, certainly. Um, but again, the, the kids coming out of that um, showed some real resilience. I know we'll talk about that in a little bit, probably. Yeah, Holmesley finished 13 points, eight rebounds, and four assists. Was on pace possibly for a triple double, yeah. the way that he was playing. But uh, after that, the Flames did show some fight. Uh, they got a lift from Mayo Baxter Bell, Brock Gardner. Those guys did some good things there in the next few minutes, and uh, really, you know, had a chance. They cut it to one with about two minutes left. But you know, kind of like what we talked about on Tuesday with the Furman loss. Just Princeton made a mo few more plays in the last three minutes of this one. Yeah, and you know, we we, we talked the entire broadcast about. I mean, that is a very good basketball team. That Princeton team is they're picked to win the Ivy League and they've got everything you need to do just that and, and make it to March. I mean they've got they've got size, they've got athleticism, they've got a great system, they've got seniors and juniors, guys that have played together, they've got inside presence, outside presence. I mean that is a, a very good team. So to lose Holmesley, uh, to not get much from, from John Dawson, um, to be right there, one or two possessions, that is a great gutsy performance from the Flames. Now, again, they come up a few points short and get a loss, but you're in there going, guys, you know, you have the components, you have guys that, again, the coaches continue to rave about the work ethic and heart of that group um, against major adversity and a good team, yeah. um, a team that was not only good, they're on fire from, from three points, 17 threes. Um, to overcome all that and have the game in the balance with a, with a possession or two, that, that, what a performance. Yeah, those 17 three-pointers made by Princeton today, the most ever by an opponent in the Vine Center here this afternoon. We'll talk more about the game here in just a couple of moments. Did have a chance to get into the locker room, though, afterwards, catch up with head coach Richie McKay and some of the other Flames, obviously very emotional with the loss of uh, Caleb Holmesley here today. Caleb Holmesley's out for the season. He, uh, similarly to when he uh, lost his senior year of high school, he, uh, yeah, he's, uh, you'll hear about the specifics, but he's out for the year. And just uh, our team is prayerful, trusting a really sovereign God and not sure why, but uh, we'll, we'll love on him and support him. He's, he's been special for our basketball program in the, 40 games that uh, that I've been privileged to coach him, and he'll have a lot more special days ahead. Man, yeah, it's always uh, gut wrenching when you see you know a teammate go down like that and hear him yell. So, uh, man, it, it was a little rough. We had some guys uh, a little shook up by, but we battled back, and uh, Caleb's gonna be working hard, and we'll go from there. It was tough. Uh, I felt, I felt. Uh, I felt very bad because I mean he he already has one uh, one uh, surgery on my ACL and now he's the older knee so I mean I feel he's you know he's part of the family so he's like my brother. It's, it's hard uh, seeing him go down, especially after he just came off uh, one of his uh, ACL tears and see him go down again. That's that's hard for a team to take in. But um, so whether it's me stepping up or us as a team stepping up, that it has to happen because he was a big part of our team. So to see him go down, uh, that, that role does have to be fixed. So. And we talk about winning plays down the stretch, and Georgia Pacheco-Ortiz made one with that three-pointer to cut it to a one-point game. Uh, that was really a, a point there where you really felt like, all right, Flames might pull this thing out. But, again, you know, a few more plays made by Princeton. Was there one moment you feel like that Princeton kind of put this game away? Well, you know, they do a couple things, and it takes both ends of the floor. So, you know, they, they get – down here, they get uh, their, one of their last possessions. Flames were doing a good job. The pack line was really good all night. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so Sp Spencer Weiss takes it off the dribble, a guy that's very effective, draws the defense, makes a nice overhead assist, and uh, you know, sort of at the, as the clock's running yeah. down. Big time shot there for them. And then they come down the other end of the floor and get the stop they need. They kind of force uh, Georgie into it was a turnover right plays, there, right. right? Made some big plays offensively, but that one they force him to get off balance, get off his feet, makes a turnover. And so again, it comes down to one score and one big stop, and that's really was the difference. Flames. I'm oh, sorry, I was going to say the, the 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 offensive plays that Georgie made, that that Brock Gardner made, a couple mm -hmm. of freshmen. Big time step it up at crunch time. Did, did really some, some good things that they're going to build off of. Yeah, Gardner finished with nine points. Kim Wright led all flame scorers with 16. Then Georgie Pacheco Ortiz finishing with 14, uh, including the uh, three made threes here today. Flames did some good things, just not enough in the end. But, uh, you know, the, the tough part of this, now, as you look at it, you play 10 games, conference play three games away now, and you lose arguably your best player. How do you kind of begin to figure things out over again. Not that you're going to radically change what you do, but it does change your rotation and it changes roles for guys. It sure does. Um, and, and again, I think things were really progressing where uh, coach wanted them. Um, guys were getting tougher. The, the defense was getting more of a, of a conducive unit and, you know, again, building towards really open up conference play strong. Um, they're not going to be at full capacity now with, with the loss of, of Caleb. But um, you're right, it's going to take – they're not going to overhaul anything offensively. It's going to be individuals taking on bigger roles. Uh, the margin of error is less. So you're talking about lapses and droughts. Have got you know guys have got to step up. Now the good sign of that is you saw what it could be. Mm -hmm. They come out of the timeout where uh, Caleb's down, and you know we talked to Coach and, and and Brock about hey what was said in there, and they were like, you know, we're going to keep fighting. We, we've got to rely on each other. Let's let's rally, next man up kind of thing. And they really did, I mean, just to overcome the deficit, the injury. So it's going to take that kind of effort on a nightly basis once they hit conference. 67-64, the final here on this Saturday afternoon in the Vines Center. Flames will have six days to get ready for their next opponent. That's Clark's Summit coming to the Vines here next Friday night at 7 o'clock. For Paul Nazigan, my name is Nick Pierce for the Liberty Flames Sports Network.